Hey guys, so this week our lesson is going to be drawing a reflection. People looking in the water, looking in a mirror, reflections bouncing off of a window or objects. In this lesson, we want to find an object that reflects and uh, draw a picture of that reflection. Now, how you do that is up to you. Um, you can draw the object and the reflection with some of the background in it or just the object by itself. Um, you might look around your house, try and find some shiny objects. You know, find a shiny bowl, look at your reflection in it. Um, or one thing that probably all of you have is a metal spoon. You could do a reflection of some other object in the spoon. Um, but I'm going to do my reflection in the spoon. It might be good to take a picture with your phone and then draw off of that. Or you could just use your eye. Uh, it's up to you. I think I'm going to use my phone for this assignment. Find a good angle and take a photo of it. And then draw that photo of the reflection. Okay, so now I've taken a photo. I held the spoon up and took a picture of the reflection. I got it. I took a few pictures at some angles. Found one I liked, and um, so now I have a reference photo of the reflection, which might be a bit easier to work with than holding the spoon up. So I'm going to set this up so I can see it. And first thing I do when I'm laying in my composition is I'm just getting those big basic shapes. You know, I see that round head, um, that bill of the hat is very exaggerated. So I'm just going in, laying out the big details here. Not worrying about any, I'm sorry, the big areas here, not worrying about the details. I'll get to those later. Right now I just kind of want to map out my composition. I just window over here going down to the shoulder. This window here really got bent by the spoon. That looks pretty cool. I'm going to add that in. Um, I like how the you actually see the edge of the spoon. Um, so I'm going to try and capture that. It looks like it ends here and kind of curves in here. So I'm going to actually put the, the spoon in the composition. Oh, wow, it works all the way off the page. It's a, so I'm going to have to beef this up, make this a little bigger. Mm, okay, so I'm starting to get a feel for it. See, I'm just mapping in the big areas here. Got the window here. Let's get these fingers, kind of on the edge of the spoon, there's these fingers. going sometimes you see corrections you can make that whole area is darker I just haven't gotten to layering that tone down yet and I'll get there 
gotta start doing that. So I'm gonna continue to layer in some of those mid-tones before I go any darker than that. I see this area is pretty underdeveloped now that I'm looking at it. So I'm gonna go in and try and build these up with those mid-tones because this is the only area that's really the wide of the page there. I mean, the only areas at the end I'm gonna have wide of the page are like here, here, a little bit here, and some of this over here. Everything else will have at least a little tone on it. Cause that's what's gonna make the highlights pop is by having them be the only white area. Okay, now I have a nice you know, layer of tone going. Um, basically hit the whole area. So um, now I could really start kind of pushing it either darker or lighter. There's certain areas I might erase a little bit. Some areas I'm gonna make a little darker. See, I, um, you know, I built it. I started off by building a little tone on the face because it's always so tempting to go in and get the face because you know that's what we're interested in. We love as humans, we're just interested in, in the human face. Our eyes draw right to it. Um, so that's where I started learning my tone. Once I got it to a certain level, I, I was able to stop myself and build everything up to that level. So now everything's kind of got that level of detail with the different tones that are going on here. I kind of was able to build the rest of the page up to that level. So now I'm going to go back into the face and um, kind of take it up a notch with the, the level of detail that I'm getting. to go around and start giving some of these other areas the same kind of treatment I was given the face. I, re I really went in on the face for a while and tried to build it up and um, I felt like I could have kept going for a while but you know I want to um, start going back outside of the face and building up the areas around it getting them up to that level. Some of the some other areas besides just the face to get that, that level of detail. Before I take that any further, I'll, I'll spread the love around the composition for a while. beauty of these distorted images is if you decide to bend something one way or the other a little bit, it's going to look great because these are, they're not natural anyway. They're bent and, and uh, distorted um, in the reflection. So you can kind of play with it a little bit too as you're doing your composition.
So as you can see guys, um, I, I have the most detail in the face and the hand. And that's good. It's good to have focal points that, because uh, that'll draw your eye in. The viewer will be drawn into those areas where you put those details in. So I did put extra care and detail into those areas, but you notice I didn't just get too bogged down in those areas and stuck there. I would get a level of detail, then I would pull myself away and build up the rest of the composition to kind of catch up with what I was doing there. And ultimately, I have way more detail here, and it's good to do that and also simplify the background. I didn't put any of the detail here, just did a nice kind of shading. Um, added kind of a relationship here where it's lighter and darker just to help give that edge. So, you know, and these are much simpler, no wires uh, or the light that's there. Just kind of, I just looked in the background and simplified it. And the important thing is that I just built up a lot of tone in the background. You saw I was just constantly layering and adding tone um, to the background to build it up so that by the end of my composition, I only had the areas that are really shining to have any white from the page on them. And that makes them pop out and really look like lights hitting them. So a spoon is a great object. Go ahead and grab a spoon and do that. Uh, you can take a photo of the reflection and then draw from the photo. That can make things easier. You can look directly at the reflection and draw that. The nice thing with the photo is then you really have the option to step away, take a break, come back, and the photo isn't going anywhere. It's going to look exactly the same. Um, and But you also don't have to go as realistic as I did. You know, I really was trying to capture it, even though I changed some things in the background to make it a little simpler. Um, I went with a much more realistic approach. You can take your spoon or whatever object, you know, glass window you're looking at, and really try and get a distorted image. Like if you do it at a, a, an angle where things really get stretched and look strange like a funhouse mirror, you can have fun with that and, um, and get a little looser, a little wilder with your composition. That's fine. I just wanna see you guys trying to do some reflections. Um, so really look forward to, to seeing what you do. And um, yeah, have a great one.